my birthday last week, I'm trying to learn how to play it. This week, we're not going to be doing an ordinary review. Instead, we're going to learn a valuable life lesson. We're going to talk about the proper way, the sophisticated way, the whiskey hunter way to drink. One bourbon, one scotch, one beer. Let's go. I'm the whiskey, 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 the whiskey hunter. Okay, before we get started, let's talk about what's happening in the world of whiskey. I'm talking about unicorns. More specifically, unicorn whiskeys. A unicorn whiskey is a whiskey that's extremely hard to find. It may be super expensive. Um, it may be um, a certain bottle that's only released in a very, uh, a very limited release. Um, it may be a bottle that you don't even know if it actually does exist. You've only seen pictures of it or heard people talking about it. Um, and one of my personal unicorn whiskeys is the the Pappy Van Winkle 23 year. Just because I just love the name of the bottle. I love the, the year 23, I, like, I love that number. Um, and something about that bottle, that whiskey, I just wanna, I just wanna get my hands on it and, and try it. And I recently had an opportunity to win a chance to potentially buy it through a lottery. Um, with the LCBO. So those of you who don't live in Ontario, Canada, you don't know what the LCBO is. It's just where people who live here get their booze from. So through the LCBO, um, some whiskey friends let me know about this. I, I got logged in, signed in as quickly as I can, and you enter this lottery where you can win a chance to buy um, certain unicorn whiskeys, uh, vintage whiskeys, whiskeys that you just can't get at the LCBO. Um, you can't get them I mean, they're extremely hard to get anywhere. So I entered to win uh, a chance to buy the Pappy Van Winkle. I didn't win. But um, I got a lot of friends in the whiskey business. And um, I may have something coming down the pipe in a couple months. We'll see. Sometimes you just gotta put it out into the universe, folks, and just let the universe give it right back to you. So, anyways, unicorns, LCBO. It was my birthday. Um, got that uke, that uke last week. Drank some whiskey. It was great. Let's get to the important business, the non-review. Let's talk about one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. So interestingly, the, the the famous song "One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer" was originally recorded by Amos Milburn, 1953, I believe, um, and he actually sang the, the 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 lyrics were the order of the lyrics was "One Scotch, One Bourbon, One Beer," which is completely different than "One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer." And then John Lee Hooker came along in 1966, and he sang and recorded "One Bourbon, One Scotch, One Beer," where that's where it became famous. Uh, other artists sang the song. John Lee Hooker's version is my favorite. If you don't know it, go check it out. You should check it out. It's great. Uh, I've been listening to it all week. Um, and I kind of have my own approach to how you should tackle this trio of drinks. But before we get to that, let's talk about three very important tips when dealing with one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. Number one. <laughs> Don't drink expensive bourbons, expens expensive uh, scotches, because you don't need to. Um, this Jim Beam was actually a gift. This bottle is huge, by the way. <laughs> a liter bottle um, was a gift, but uh, very affordable. You can grab this liter bottle of Jim Beam uh, at the LCBO for 40 bucks, which is a steal. This bottle of Dewar's. <laughs> um, it's a blended scotch. I wouldn't recommend using single malts, your expensive single malts for this type of um, situation. 
This is a blend. It's a 12 year. It's 50 bucks at the LCBO. And it's great for this type of deal. The beer, however, I I say I say splurge if you can. Innocent gun. <laughs> um, I've been drinking this beer, this this bottle, this can. Not this particular can, but I've been drinking this beer since I as long as I've been drinking whiskey, because it pairs great with bourbon, with whiskey, with scotch. Aged in bourbon barrels. Something about this beer just works good with these types of spirits. So it's just my recommendations. Um, if you have your own ideas, things that you uh, know work good in this type of situation, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to, to hear what type of bottles people are using. <laughs> Tip number two, you don't have to shoot the drinks. You don't have to shoot back the bourbon, shoot back the scotch, chug the beer. Uh, I'm sure when the song was popular, people probably did that a lot. I'm sure over the years, all over the world, people have done that, that have ordered a bourbon, a scotch and a beer and chugged them or drank them in different, different ways. You don't have to do that. Um, keep it a little bit sophisticated. You can enjoy your bourbon. You can enjoy the scotch. You can enjoy the beer. Um, it's, I think it's important to keep it, keep it responsible. Drinking these, this, this much alcohol too soon can be dangerous. So keep that in mind <laughs> and tip. Number three, I just want to reiterate one more time. This is more of a health advisory statement. This is a lot of alcohol to be consumed in a short period of time. So just keep it responsible. Maybe leave this type of drinking to the professionals. Let's get to the tasting. So let's do this. Like I said, I have a different approach to the one bourbon, one scotch, one beer, the, uh, the whiskey hunter method, we'll call it. And this is a tried and tested method uh, over the years, put to, um, put to practice, put to work many times, unfortunately. Um, I like to start with the bourbon, then I go to the beer, and then I go to the scotch, then back to the beer, back to the scotch, and kind of play off those two until I'm kind of finished with the trio. So let's, uh, let's start with the bourbon and we'll kind of walk you through it. So like I said, I'm not doing a, a traditional tasting. We're just gonna, gonna go through this a little bit quicker than normal. Um, you don't have, like I said, keep it responsible. You don't have to do this fast, but I am professional. So I've got my gym beam. So using the shot glasses, to keep it, keep it a little bit old school. With the gym beam, white, white label, nice and light, nothing too strong. I think it's just 40%, 40%, a little bit of fruitiness, on the palate, a little bit of nuttiness. Mm -hmm. It's a small shot glass. That fruitiness, especially the nuttiness, gets you ready. It doesn't get me ready for another shot of scotch. It gets me ready, it gets my, my palate going. Give me something cold and refreshing. That's why I like to go to the beer next. Um, and with the Innocent Gun, I don't know what that noise was with the innocent gun oh aged in bourbon barrels has some of that caramel and vanilla already in it um, and it's got its, its its own kind of creaminess just kind of quenches that uh, that thirst you get from the bourbon where you have that nuttiness nuttiness in your mouth the creamy cold vanilla caramel uh, of the innocent gun just makes everything go oh, nice and nice and cool nice and relaxed And then from here, once you got beer on the mouthfeel, the palate's all kind of cleansed with the beer. That's when I like to very slowly go sip for sap, dip for tat, sip for sap with the whiskey, this nice blend from Dewar's 12 year. Mm. So you get a little bit of smoke. Oof, very nice. A little bit of vanilla, a little bit of caramel. A little bit of almost like um, like a like a desserty sweetness, like almost like a chocolate sweetness. Now, mm. get that smoke, that sweet. Go back to the beer. Talk to your friends. Hey, how's it going? Hey, cheers. 
no need to rush, no need to chug anything. Back to the whiskey. Oh, cheers, hey, hey, good to see you, cheers, yeah. Mm. Little sips, oh, trying to focus in on all those different tastes. Go back to the beer, cleanser, refresher, creamer, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. <sighs> keeping it responsible, keeping it sophisticated, keeping it sophisticated. Um, like I said, keep in mind, you don't have to do this fast as like under two minutes for, for this trio of tastings. Um, just the play back and forth with the, with the, um, with the, the scotch and the beer. It's a beautiful thing. Hmm. Finish that off. If you've got extra beer left, great. Like I said, best not to do this in your basement alone. Um, it is COVID, but best to do this with friends, with family. A fun little experiment. Be responsible though, folks. Um, but if you are in a, a, a situation where you can kind of experiment with this, do it. And like I said, let me know what bourbons you use, what scotch you would use, what beer you would use. Let me know your recipe. I'd love to uh, check out other people's recipes and um, learn something from you. Hope you learned something from me. Cheers. That again no just joking once is enough once is enough there you have it folks one bourbon one scotch one beer still trying to figure out how to play this thing how to tune it <laughs> let me know your thoughts on this little trio I'd love to know how you do it if you don't do it please leave a comment below if you like the video, like it, share it, subscribe. Woo! <laughs> I'm not quite ready to not look at this thing while I'm playing it yet, but I gotta go, folks. Check us out on Patreon. Check us out anywhere. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on Spotify. Find the Whiskey Hunter. I'm out there. Hope you have a great weekend. See you next time. Whiskey, 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 whiskey honor.